This is a Ben Frank Connection presentation. Guys, we are here and live with the ABJ podcast. I can see Dante in the back popping for that. That was awesome. But we are here and live with the ABJ podcast, episode 124 with Dante Elizabeth James, the greatest social media influencer on the planet. And they just so happen to be from the greatest place on earth. And that's Northeast Pennsylvania, where your boy ABJ is also from. So we are here. We're live. Make sure you guys check the links below for all things ABJ, as well as my guests tonight to find them on all social media, everywhere that they got. They got a lot going on. They got merchandise. Like we're Very one and the same, and I can't wait to pick their brain about, about how they go about things and do things, and I'm very, very pumped. The chat, I'm, I'm going to say right now, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm nervous as hell, so I'm going to say that right off the bat. This is the biggest live stream I've ever had as a content creator as a as as any of that so all of you coming in and showing that support is a a beautiful thing because that is the goals i would love to do to build a community as well of just really like-minded amazing people let's not waste any more time here i'll i'll get all the plugs and, and stuff out going later on but let's have some fun let's bring in uh, our guest today, Dante. What's going on, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I took the catchphrase a little bit. I took the catchphrase. I love it. You did great. <laughs> Thank you. I tried. I tried so much. Uh, yeah. So it, I want to kind of go back to where we met, right? So okay. I, I, I was a fan of the TV show on Netflix, Big Mouth. Okay. <laughs> and there was soup, and I was on TikTok. And when the contest, or the, not the contest, but the trend was going of uh, <laughs> who can do Lola's voice mm-hmm. was going, there was two content creators who I thought did it perfectly. And I don't remember the other one, uh, but she, she always had her hair up, uh, black hair. I forget who she was, but she always did it in her car, but had like, you guys were very similar, like where you do the voice and then laugh and break while you do it. Like it was very. It just was good. It was just very natural. And I just remember like, that's so fucking funny. <laughs> and I would I would laugh every time I see it. And then I followed you. So then we go to a uh, a, 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 a drag show and yes. you're in the crowd. And I'm like, where do I know them from? Yes. Are, they, are they from? Do we work together? I think I went to I came up to you. I was like, did you work at American Eagle? Like, that was like <laughs> that's where I was for a long time. You're like, no. Yes. And I was like, oh, all right, whatever. And I walked away mm-hmm. like and then like. Uh, next show i'm there and i'm we're hanging out again and i i I, before the show happened i'm with lily and i'm like oh my god i'm on tiktok and i scroll through and you pop up on the for you page (laughs) and i was like oh my god that's dante we go to the show i'm like i've been following you for years i didn't know you lived in the the area where you're from (laughs) and and we hit it off and we've been talking ever since everyone's so shocked that i'm from pennsylvania i think that is the craziest thing like oh my god i didn't know you were from pennsylvania i didn't know you were from pennsylvania i'm a proud pennsylvanian baby pennsylvania all day i love living here i'm very very (laughs) proud i i I don't think there would be anywhere else i'd want to live but and going I back agree. to what you going back to what you were saying is I remember seeing you around like throughout the years, you know, like seeing you here or there or something like that. Like, you know, I always remembered your like your face. You know, I, I remember people's faces, names. Don't yeah. even bother. Don't yeah. even bother. If I see your face, I know who you are. But I remember seeing you throughout, and then I remember seeing you at the drag show. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was a kitten. I was a kitten that night. I was collecting money. Yeah, <laughs> yes. that, was my, that was my job. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was. It's. I think one of the things in Northeast PA is it's very charming here, but it is yes. very. Uh, sometimes it can be very bland. Everyone yes. is like that unseasoned food, and then mm. when people come up with a little bit of charisma or pizzazz, like we do, we stand mm. out. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. You much more than me, but we stand <laughs> out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now have you always been from this part, part part of pa i know you said a few times in your live that you have moved around a little bit and been different places well i lived i grew up in hazelton pennsylvania and then um i went to did i live in pittston i think i lived in pittston before i went to college so i lived in pittston for maybe a year or two 
and then uh, moved down to Philadelphia for a year for college and then moved back. And then I've been here ever since. So the the person we know and see as Dante, we were kind of talking behind the scenes of uh, growing up in Northeast Pennsylvania, especially in the Hazleton, School County, Luzerne area. It's very, we'll say it's bland. People aren't very seasoned yet. We're not very cultured. <laughs> we're not very um, open to a lot of things right away. And it took us a long time to catch up. I think we are getting a lot better. I don't mm. think there's hate in Northeast Pennsylvania, which it gets a lot. But I think once people step out of their comfort zone, they, they open up more to different ideas. I could 110% agree with what you just said. I think it's, it's gotten better 110%. But I also don't know if that changed in my mind that it got better because I just started being myself and not caring and blah, 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 blah. I don't know if I just noticed it more when I cared. Or, di or not that when I started not caring. But you are right with that. I think we've gotten a lot better. And that's why I love living here is I, 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 I love the people. I, yeah. I love it. I think everyone's pretty nice. You know, it's a pretty quiet place, you know, for the most part. And I just love, and it's beautiful. I remember I went to go visit my mom in Delaware and I was like, where are all the mountains? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you look at here? <laughs> you know? And then when I came up back home to the mountains, I was like, oh my God, I feel safe. Like, I, I just love, I love Pennsylvania. But yeah, yes, I it's, do it's one of those places where you hear, sometimes people get around each other and they get comfortable and they say silly things, but they don't necessarily mean it it's just kind of that they're kind of sometimes still stuck in the early 90s 2000s where things were kind of socially accepted but it was also uh a thing where if, if your cars broke down on the side of the road you'll have 16 people who pull over behind you and be like do you need help do you need gum? Like, I'll, I'll, I'll change a tire for you you're like oh this is great you know what yes I mean? but, yes but but when did you when did you fully uh, embrace your your style, your look, and who you are. Or was it something that you that you had to hide for a while because of the way culture was? Well, I think in high school I was more myself. I was really, I mean, up until college, and then I think probably around. Probably, I mean, not to get into it too early, but probably when I started drinking like heavily is when I lost myself. Yeah. I kind of like. I, I kind of started dressing more plainly, trying to blend in more, trying to like stuff like that. And I really lost myself. And then the moment I got sober, it was like, so like all through those years, probably like, I want to say like a 10th or 11th grade in high school, I started like more branching out and being myself and wearing crazy clothes and all of that. And then I think again, when I moved back, I kind of went a little nuts. And then after I went a little nuts, I kind of like was drinking still, but doled myself down to kind of like so I was kind of self-loathing a bit yeah. so then when I stopped drinking I was like I'm just gonna live my life for me like I'm just gonna be who I want I'm gonna dress how I want I'm gonna be as loud as I want I'm gonna grow my hair out I'm gonna wear makeup I mean and I wore makeup when I was younger but like I stopped for a while there because I was like I don't know it was just a weird time and I and that was really it. And now I'm just I'm just unapologetically myself and I'm grateful for it every day cuz it took me a long time to get back to who I was. You know what yeah. I mean? It was it was a wild journey. <laughs> yeah. I, and, and honestly for me as as seeing you as a content person or just a, a person in general. I don't want to I don't want to keep putting the box of a content person on you, but obviously you are like you do have a social media influence. And I think <laughs> and honestly like your your goals for me when it comes to how you want to be as a social media person. So when mm. I got into this the podcasting game, I wanted to be like Kevin Smith. I wanted to mm. be that guy who I sold all of my nerdy collectibles to buy my camera so I can chase my dream of talking mm. to people and hearing their stories. But I, I always, always had that thing like growing up. I loved emo music. I loved I always wanted long hair. I was a pro mm. wrestling fan. But like my, I had a graduating class of 50 kids. If I grew my hair out, I'm fighting every day. Oh, I yes. I did whatever I could to hide. So I didn't get in those fights or confrontations. And mm. and then like as I get old, like I, I still to this day as an adult, I struggle of trying to like where I'm like, I want to go and let my inhibitions down and go have fun and do what I mm. want to do. And, mm. and, and that's what resonates with me is like what I respect so much of you is how mm -hmm. you're just unapologetically you. And I think that's mm -hmm. so why we have a hundred and some people watching tonight is because, <laughs> Hi guys! <laughs> because you have that ability to be unapologetically you. And I think people mm. feel that energy and feel that aura of you and just, it inspires them to be better people. And that's why I do it. That's honestly why I do it. Because I, 
life's too short. It's too, it, it feels so long. It really and truly does. When you're in the present moment, you're like, oh God, you know, here we have to wake up again. Ah! And like all this stuff, you know, but in all reality, tomorrow is going to come no matter what. And when you're, I, I say this all the time and a uh, hundred of people in this chat could attest to this. When I'm 80 some years old, if I make it till then, I'm, I'm really Jeez. honestly, I'm trying, I, I mean, I'm trying to be up out of this bitch. You know, I, I want to be, when, when I have to wear a diaper, I'm done. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm good. Old like, yeller me if I get to that point. Take out, me out I'm, back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to out old yeller myself. Um, <laughs> but, no, like, I don't want to be that old person that, like, looks back and is like, where did the time go? And what did I do with that time? Yes. You know what I mean? Like that's that scares me more than a lot of things. That that's that that scares me more than what people think of me, than what people want to judge me as. Um all that scares me more than these strangers, weirdos. I never put uh, someone whose opinion I don't care about, I don't ever put their opinion above my own or 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 what they think of me above what I think of myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? My I opinion say, of me is more important than their opinion of me. You get I what I mean? If, if I get old enough where I just like stop caring in that aspect, like I'm stealing. I'm not paying for oh it. Oh, my God. I'm breaking oh my God. so many laws. Like I'm going to be that 80 year old. Like, do we put them in jail? Like, I'm mm -hmm. not going to hurt anybody, mm -hmm. but I'm stealing. everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm no. sorry. I'm old. I didn't know. <laughs> I want to go full blown basket case. Like, I think that's. I, I want to embrace that and just not care. Like just pee wherever I want and yeah. just again, <laughs> steal things, um, walk in, so like walk in somewhere and be like, Oh my God. And play that like old person. Like, Oh, I don't know where I am. I'm so confused. Like, you know, I, I I'm excited for that. If, oh, I'm not excited for it, but I mean, yeah. if I make it that far, uh, God willing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So when did you enter the world of content creating and, and uh, TikTok and stuff like that? Because actually, before I answer that, this is this is where we, we have I don't, I don't I'm not a political person. I don't get into that stuff. But we are in a world right now where there is a situation where TikTok can go away. It can it can end tomorrow, like the way the legislation is going. And my personal opinion is I think if it does, I think the reason it did is not because what they're saying it is, is because I think TikTok is legit a face to face communication to communication there's no uh misinterpretation through texting or typing or reading a comment thread mm -hmm. it is 100 percent interaction face to face mm -hmm. and i think people who thought so differently are having that face-to-face -face interaction and realizing they're seeing the humanity in each other mm -hmm. and we're finding out who the real enemy are. it's so punk rock i love it but we're yes. finding out who the real enemies are and where we're going wrong and it's so much it's 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 breaking divides like tiktok mm -hmm. was that app where you're like is it creepy because kids are dancing and there's adults dancing and now it's like no this is a place where people because the algorithm is so good it puts you where you need to be and where you want to be and you yes. don't get a lot of nonsense where mm -hmm. it, it, it's a comfort zone for people mm -hmm. and people have created businesses people have created lifestyles it has mm -hmm. helped small business so much yes. but how did you enter that world were you always a tiktok person were you doing this content thing beforehand well let me before i start that say i think tiktok and i don't mean to sound corny but maybe i do but the TikTok is really the what 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 they used to call the inner the internet the super information super highway. Yeah, like TikTok is legit like one of those minute trains. Like it's not even like a highway. It's like one of those bullet trains because it's like uh, something happens. Everybody know like it, it. Everybody knows like that. It is unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, but one thing I'm so. My, I actually had two friends that were on YouTube and they started their YouTube journey, started filming. And I, I was watching them the one day and it's something I always wanted to do. I was like, oh my God, I, I watched, you know, of course, all, all the, all the YouTubers and all of that will watch their videos. I'm like, oh, I want to do that. Oh, I want to do that. And then the one day I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I think it was like Thanksgiving of 2019 wow. and I was, and I did my makeup and I, uh, for Thanksgiving dinner. And then I did a second video right after that. So I had one to post the next day and it was me doing my hair. 
And because I saw my friends doing it, and I was like, well, they they seem so, it seems so easy to them. Like, why can't I? If they could do it, I could do it. You know, like I've, uh, I could definitely do this. And um, and then I just started there, and I always thought like, you know, some people are good at painting, some people are good at uh, instruments, some people are good at this, some people are that. The only thing I'm good at is being myself. Like it's, it, it's the only thing You're I, a master at it. I only have myself to sell. <laughs> like that's all I have is myself. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I gave that up long ago. Um, but I, I thought that I, I, I don't, I, I'm a master. Wait, what's that saying? I'm a, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. You know, yes. I, I'm, I'm okay at painting. I'm okay at this. I'm okay at that. And I could probably be better, but also I can't focus. Um, so what else am I better at? I'm, I'm best at being myself. Growing up, everyone told me, Dante, you belong on SNL. Dante, you are so funny. Oh my gosh, you should be on all that. You should be this. Because I was always... We Dodge that you. bullet. Dodge uh, that it, bullet. Oh. <laughs> Yikes! E. <laughs> Yikes! Those poor. I mean, <laughs> dude, I wanted to be an all that kid so oh bad. Oh my god, who didn't? Yeah. I wanted to be Amanda Bynes. I really want. I I love. And I made a TikTok about this a couple weeks ago. I love Amanda. I loved when I was younger. I love her now. I will. I'm Amanda Bynes, one and number one fan. If there's one fan, it's me. And ever since I was little, she. she I always looked up to her, and she always reminded me of Lucille, Lucy Ball, Lucille Ball, I, and. I, I loved love Lucy. Lucy. Oh my God. <laughs> and you know, so, um, but anyway, so then I just started making videos and it was, you know, I, I was making videos every week, every two, uh, twice a week. And then slowly TikTok came around and to be honest with you, I didn't understand it at first because I was so used to doing long form content. Like I was so used to, I'm like, how do you fit all this into 15 seconds or a minute? And, and I, I remember I was dancing. I'm not going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, even like talking or anything, like how do you fit so all you want to say into a minute? I really struggled with that. Mm -hmm. And then I went on it a little bit and kind of like fell off of it. And then it was actually, to be honest with you, it was the first week of the pandemic and I downloaded it because I was bored. I was, I, I was home. I didn't, I, no one worked, anything like that. JB still had work, but I didn't have work. So I downloaded it and started like messing around with it. And then that's when I started going on that journey of that. But I really, because at that time I was vlogging every day. I vlogged for a year of my first year of sobriety. So I vlogged every single day mm. of my sobriety. And I didn't really jump into TikTok because I was already doing that. So it was kind of like, I didn't really get on TikTok till that year was up because I, I needed a break from that year of vlogging. So I kind of jumped on to TikTok to have some fun and kind of like, you know what I mean? Because it, it got mm -hmm. towards the end of vlogging every single day. I was just burnt out. Like I was just like uh, putting a camera in your face and vlogging every single day. And then you sit there and you edit it. So you're re-watching your whole entire day mm. and like editing every little piece and every little part. And at, by the end there, I was just like, I need a break. So then I jumped on TikTok to have some fun. And here I am. <laughs> I, I got rid of editing probably two years into my content oh. creating because I was just like, I, I'm, I'm very Beatles, right? Like mm. Be Beatles walked into Abbey Road. They recorded on really low budget, shitty equipment. And they're like, there's imperfections in this. And they're like, leave it. That's who we mm. are. All we mm. are our imperfections. And, and then music and entertainment and culture all got to this point of just like, everyone has to be perfect all the time. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and then it got to a point where people played characters online. And if you wanted mm. to be, a, if you wanted to get popular on the internet, you had to be a character. You had to be something mm. that wasn't you. And mm. I really think the pandemic entered an age of content creators that like gave me hope to be this because I think people are desperately seeking out authenticity. And, yes. And, 100%. And, I think, and I think that's where you shine. You are the most authentic person. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, it really, it really is. And, um, I, and I, I have seen you outside of the camera and when mm. I seen you in person, you, you are like kind of quiet and to yourself mm. until mm. you're comfortable and stuff like that. Mm. And I was like, Oh, that's, mm. that's a cool, I'm not saying that you're mm. not this person all the time, but it is interesting to see that other dynamic where you're just like, I'm in my zone. I want to vibe. I'm, I'm in, I'm in public type deal. Like here's you come tell me you were a content person. I had to come to you. No, you yeah. I don't know. Cause well, I don't <laughs> brag about that. I don't brag yeah, yeah. about that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not like, Hey, guess how many followers I have or, 
anything like that. I don't, I don't talk about, I don't like talk about that. I just, I, and also I'm quiet like that because also I respect people and their spaces. I'm mm -hmm. not the only one in the room. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yes, I'm loud and I have a loud laugh and I could be loud and all that. But when I'm in a public space, I respect everybody in that space. Unless everybody's cheering and being loud, then I'm just kind of chilling until I, like you said, until I get comfortable. And then I'll be loud and stuff like that. But if I'm walking through the... Up. I, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> Once well, I get comfortable and I let that go, I'm taking over the room. Well, I'm also not in Walmart like, <laughs> guys, guys, I woke up again. You know, when I'm in public, I, I respect everybody around me because I could yes. be a loud motherfucker. I mean, I've had people that have come up to me in Walmart and said, I knew you were here because I heard your laugh. Like, so I could be loud, but also I, I want to respect everybody. And I want to, you know, and, and the world doesn't revolve around me. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't think I'm famous. I don't talk like I'm famous. I don't even like the word famous. I don't like any of that. I, 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 I just want to have community. fun. Community, yes. Yeah, I, yes. I, I want to build a community. I don't have mm. fans. I, I supporters is still kind of mm. like a, a tricky one for me. Mm -hmm. So the joke is, is I, I have a Discord, and Discord is where if I'm not on camera, that's where I can be myself, but still give myself to my people mm -hmm. and, and be there, and we can all talk about things we're into, or someone can go there and 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 I'll kind of lead into my next question of like if they're having a bad day or I'm having a bad day, where I have to feel like I'm on point on my camera, but when I go to my Discord, I, I go there and I'm like, yo, I'm not having a a good mental health day like i'm struggling mm. i'm ch i'm chasing this dream i want to be this person i want to build a community that i have enough influence that i can help other people because that's that's what i want to be as a content creator i want to be like i found this really talented person in their field in their industry and i think they need more attention because mm. and that that's that's a and sense spotlight that them and spotlight them yes mm. like i i want to use my Mm -hmm. my my street cred or my clout to help other yes. people get hit, hit their goals or getting people to that next level but uh when you're making content like i haven't seen the early early days but when you were going through sobriety and stuff and all i see is what you do now where you joke around where you have like your angry face or you're like you're, you wake up and your hair is oh. not perfect or everything's the way it i is. love but it <laughs> do you have moments as a content creator where like I, I'm sad today or I'm not having a good day. Do you go on camera and let your audience see that side of you? Or do you mm. like, no, I don't because I, I have to say, I love what I do. I love filming. If I'm having a bad day away from me and yes, yeah, sometimes I'm not in the mood, but I'm also someone that retreats. So when I'm upset or sad or depressed or I, I, I'm a, I'm a cancer. So I get in my shell and I'm just in my shell and I need to like chill and do, do. And this is what I tell my, my followers, all of that. I say to them, I, I take that moment for myself. I do what makes me happy. I'll go take a bath. I'll eat junk food. I'll get stoned. You know, like I'll, I'll do what I need to do. And then tomorrow I wake up and try again. I don't show those sad parts and all of that because to be honest with you, and I'm not saying this like I don't have them, but there, I don't have many. Do I have doubts sometimes? Oh my God, of course, 100%. Sometimes I'll be sitting there and I'll be like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, what am I doing here? Like, oh my God, you know, like I'll have those like, or am I doing this right? Or am I doing that right? Or am I making them happy? Am I making them laugh? Am I, am I putting out enough content? I, I have those moments, but in like down moments, I use my filming and being creative to get me out of that like to get me out of that mood because i look forward to it i wake yeah. up every day and i'm like what am i filming today what, what do i want to joke about what do i want to talk about what do i want to it what it, it's what gets me up in the morning so when i have those down times i kind of just chill to myself i chill to myself i have a really close group of friends that i have to talk to i have a wonderful family i have gb you know so those are kind of the people i go to when I'm down or sad or, or scared or, or need to talk or they're my support system. You know, I don't, I don't want to put that on my followers or my community or anything like that. I, I don't want to, I want to make them laugh. I want to make them happy. I want to make them smile. That that's, that's my mission in life. That's another reason why I vlogged my first year of sobriety. Cause that's my, my mission is to spread love, kindness, and laughter. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. And I'm not here. I don't want to really get in the mix of negativity. Someone said to me the, the, a couple of weeks ago in one of my lives, Dante, you know what you need to do? You need to get in some drama. 
I'm like, I, I don't want to be in drama. I don't, I'm good on I, that. I find myself in it, but also I, I am a Northeast coal region boy who is 30, <laughs> who's 37 years old, who grew up insanely toxic masculine. And I'm trying to learn myself in today's society, but also I, I do give some of my emotions out because I grew up in a time where as, as a, as a straight, as a, not just a straight, but I just do that as a joke, but like as a, an Italian Irish kid from Northeast Pennsylvania, like you're crying, you're crying mm. right now. Like how yeah. dare, like, and I think it's good for, for men to, to showcase that. And, and it's okay to let your inhibitions down and don't bottle them up because I mean, we grew up where we grew up like how many times mm -hmm. have, have, have we don't have people around us anymore because of they either took their own lives or went down a path of negativity with drugs and alcohol because mm -hmm. in this area where we grew up is there's not a lot of resources or outlets to do things and and mm -hmm. that's kind of what i want to slip into this uh go into this um uh, yeah, we got people mother stripping now. Meow. I'm hot, and I'm actually I'm gonna put the, I'm actually I'm actually gonna put this jacket back on because the back of my back is drenched. It is drenched, <laughs> and my extensions are gonna get all messed up. So I'm putting it back on, and I'm just gonna sweat. I'm just gonna. Hey, ABJ is making Dante. Oh, Let's get it. Oh. No, <laughs> I love the hitting. All right, so real quick before I get okay, back go ahead. Stuff, when you do your, your video, yeah, the you know, the the videos where you. Uh, you people are hitting on you in the comments and you're like guy i, I fucking love they're my favorite ones like when you do those are like when you're in like the grocery store and you're like guys I'm oh my God, like, I uh, die from those they're my favorite. those i have to say those are my, i i love filming those because they're so funny because it's so easy to just like stop guys yeah. like stop and then i i love it someone said Several videos ago, someone said, are you supposed to be Juliette Lewis from The Other Sister? I was like, no! <laughs> so before the podcast you... started, I was really, I was nervous. Like, I was nervous because I, like, I, I looked at the comment <laughs> section and stuff like, oh my God, we, this is blowing up. And uh, I was like, I got to listen to music, calm myself down. And I put on She Talks to Angels. And Lily's like, why? I'm like, because I'm about to talk to an angel. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, if I tell that to Dante, like, they remind me of that skit. But uh, I don't know. I listen to sad music sometimes when I, to boost myself up. If that, I'm the opposite. I'm weird. I don't know. I listen to sad, depressing music to bring myself up. I don't, I'm, I'm strange. But anyway, uh, when it comes Whatever to sobriety, works for you. <laughs> yeah. Sobriety in Northeast Pennsylvania is in, in this area is tough because the only place you can go and be social are bars are clubs are those things. And that's the only place we can go to kind of be around people we care about and, and, exp and, and, and express yourself or go listen to music or go see a band. How did you, how did you, is that something? Oh, first off, I don't know if that's something you're into. Are you a club or a local bar scene or anything like that? Oh, I was. Oh, I yeah. was. Yes. Oh, I was. Yes. Um, I, y yes. <laughs> I don't know how much more to emphasize that. Yes, I loved going to the bar. I at uh, one point had a schedule going to the bar. I'd go on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Like I had a schedule. And then if I wasn't at that that bar on Tuesdays, uh, Thursdays, and Sundays, then I was at a different bar on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. You know what I mean? Or someone's house, or a party, or oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> when you were going through sobriety, was it was it hard to step away from being social? because those places where it could have been triggering things for you? No, because one thing I realized, I, I, again, I am very, very lucky for my great, I have a great group of friends. I am very, very lucky to have a wonderful group of friends um, and a great support system in my family. You know, I, 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 you come to a realization at some point in your sobriety and it's, it's hard for some people. It was a little hard for me, but once I realized it, I was like, Oh, okay. Um, It wasn't, uh, I, let me put it this way. I, if you're asking me, like, was it hard for me to be social by not drinking? No, because I have friends over my house. You know, we have dinner with our friends all the time. You know, our house is a big gathering house, which I'd love to have you guys over sometime. Love um, to. Um, but it's a big gathering house. So my friends are constantly here in the summer in you know every week uh me jb and i and our two girlfriends have dinner every week and watch a movie or go out or do stuff so it's kind of like and, and that was one thing too like my core group of friends that i have not a, like a couple of them don't drink and never have 
You know what I mean? So, uh, and even the ones that do, it doesn't bother me or anything. So, and I don't mind going to a bar. Alcohol doesn't bother me. I, I could be around it. I, I, it, it almost killed me. The last thing I want to do is touch it again. You get what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, absolutely. I got so turned off to it where it's to the point. I'm not sitting here like this. I'm like, Oh, like it's, it scares me. So, um, no, I wouldn't say, and I, but I know it's also not that easy for other people. I understand yeah. that. I am, I am so, I, it's weird to say, but I am so lucky in my sobriety that it was so easy for me to get sober, stay sober and transition. You know what I mean? No. It was very easy for me to transition and I know it's not for other people. And that's like, you know, that's the thing that sucks is one thing also that you learn in sobriety is that you can't save everybody. You can't, you can't, and people come to me for advice all the time that help me, you know, you can't say it, it cause uh, one thing with alcoholism, it always starts with the, per you know, it starts with the person. I could tell you every, my story, what I did, how I did it. Um, I don't suggest going to the hospital, but you can, if you want. Um, I, but it all starts with you. And guess what? Your journey is going to be different than mine. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's going to, you might struggle not being able to go to the bars, go to the restaurant, you know, you might, and you just have to be prepared for that. But it, 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 it's, it's easier to get through it than you think instead of turning back to that. If that mm -hmm. makes any sense. Like I'd rather go through walking in a bar again and being comfortable than going back to drinking. Yeah. You know. I, one, so I, I, I've never had to go through sobriety. Like I, I do drink, but I'm the type of person I like to get to that nice buzz and then I stop. I don't mm. like to feel drunk. Um, so I just get to that nice, easy spot. By the way, this is this has really been popping me here. The DGE or D E J and A B J. I love <laughs> as the pro wrestling fan of me loves the acronyms. I um, love that. Yeah. It. yeah. Love um, it. But um, I feel like a lot of people like social being social is a huge trigger to people. And like it's it's something that people crave because they want to be around the people they care about. But then when all of their friends are like, let's go get drunk, they're like, oh, man, I love you guys, but I have to figure myself out before I come back. And then they fall back into that trap again. Well, one thing I have to say is I'm not a social person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like people. Um, yeah. And that's why I drank. That's why I drank to be more social, to talk, yeah. to be drunk, to get that liquid courage, to all of that. And I think that's another reason why it was so easy for me to transition because I, I'm an introvert extrovert. So like I can sit home, but also I like to go out, but then also I like to be home, but then I also like to go out. Like I, I'm also like empathic. So when I'm around a lot of people, it like drains me. It's very yes. like, I get very, freaked out you know so yeah. it was easy for me to transition because then i was just home i was doing you know just things i liked i wasn't going and wasting money at a bar or or driving drunk or you know any of those things so it was kind of like an easy i i kind of when i first got sober it was to me like i don't have a choice like i have to get sober and i have to stay sober you know what i mean like or i'm gonna die so it was kind of like, I didn't have a choice. Like I, I, that's what I thought in my head. Like, well, shit, oh, if I keep doing it, I'm going to die. If I don't do it, I could live and make the best of my life. Which one do I want to do? You know? And it was kind of like, I, and I laid in the hospital bed that night and I was like, I'm not ready to go yet. Like, is that all I accomplished? That's it. I'm leaving this world a drunk. No, I want to leave this world inspiring people and helping people and making people laugh. I don't want to, be leave this world crying at my kitchen table like drunk like oh my god like now that now no. that's for legos all right <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> and oh. then after that hyper fixation it'll be something else <laughs> yeah. i i want legos so bad so i want but the problem is i don't have a lot of space so yes. I, there's a lot going on in my personal life where i had to move back home 16 year relationship down the tubes the whole nine but i uh i want one of those huge sets like i want to build like mm. disney castle or hogwarts or something mm. insane yes. but i'm yes. like where, where do you put it when i know <laughs> anthony i'm the same way they have a hocus pocus one i want it so bad and i'm like where would i put that i have yeah. i have a, like I have enough stuff, okay? Like I have, I, and it's funny because every time I get rid of stuff, I get more stuff. So it's kind of like it's just a recycling of trash all the time. Um, but no, I completely agree. Where would I put something like that? The like Titanic where, one I've seen online uh, I, is massive. 
It's yeah. like seven. It's like six and a half mm-hmm. feet long. Mm-hmm. Where do you mm-hmm. put it? It'd be awesome to build. Or even those Star Wars ones. What the Star Wars ones they have, where it's like the giant. Fuck, where do you put something like that? Like that, you have to have a whole. Like you have to. Like that's one thing I think. I think you have to be really in the Legos to do those ones and keep them and like yeah. display them. You know, I think I don't think just some regular lego person like you or i some peasant lego person is gonna buy that put it together and then like have the room for it those people yeah. have rooms dedicated to their legos it's, it's bonkers. if you're buying something like that you already have a designated spot for it okay yeah. <laughs> and it's one of those things like do i take it apart and then if i do do i have to put a how do you follow the instructions again you're going through a thousand eight thousand pieces like it 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 it, it, it makes me and they're bad out. for the environment yeah, they're really bad for the, but I love them. I want I'm, one. I'm, I'm contributing. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm contributing. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm contributing I, I like to it with ones. my Lego flower. It's a good bit. I like the flower ones. <laughs> I mean, what can you do? What There's can a girl you do? on TikTok I follow where she'll she'll buy like a Star Wars one and then she'll put the Star Wars movies on in the back and she'll like watch it while she's building it and it's like almost like an ASMR where it's like. Yes, yes, right. yes. And then she, but she'll be like, she'll watch six Star Wars movies and still not have that Lego piece done. I'm like, <laughs> got to restart the movie again. And it's like, it's a time last one. I don't know who she is, but she's really, really good. But that's how I get my Lego fix through her because I yes. watch her build them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, yes. You, and her content people like are like, oh, we got to buy you a new Lego set so you can make more content. I'm like, that's what I need. I need I need people to support my habits. That's what <laughs> <laughs> my um, hyper fixation. Like wrestling for the figures moment. i uh so i lost i lost all of my childhood in a house fire oh shit so like oh my god i never got rid of like my toys or my collectibles or like and i'm just and now i'm an adult and i'm like i kind of wish i can go back and get my old stuff somehow. oh my god i'm the same way anthony our neighbors set our apartment on fire and i lost all my stuff and i i remember oh my god there's i think i think about them to this day i'm like there is a blanket it was like my favorite blanket i didn't get that i think about them and then i think about anthony also i'm like i should just go on ebay and buy them again and just yeah. like heal my inner child because i, I miss I, them so much what was your favorite like toy that you had oh my god okay um well honestly the first one that comes to mind and the one that i'm always bummed about and it's the one that i always think about okay so me as a little gay boy, I loved <laughs> Sabrina. I know I used to be a boy once. Um, I love Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Great job. Love Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And at one point, she came out. There was like this. She didn't come out with it, but um, the the big wigs did. Came out with a crystal ball, and when it spun, you used to ask it a question, and it would spin, and the lights in it would make the answer. When I had that, that I was as es- Esmeralda. <laughs> I was Esmeralda telling telling fortunes and with a towel on my head. I mean, I I loved that damn crystal ball. I really and truly did. And I think about it all the time because I think I was most bummed about that because I think I just got it or I just got it or didn't have it that long. And I remember it was expensive. It was like yeah. I, me getting it was a treat. So when I lost it then, I was like, well... Not getting another one of those anytime soon. So yeah. that's I was, sucks, I was but... the Clarissa Explains It All kid. I loved that show. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um yes. but mine what I don't know if this is way older. Like the, I this is I wasn't even a teenager when this was a toy, but it was called like the 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 your mon your my my pal monster, but it was like a big purple monster and he had big teeth and he had a football helmet and a jersey yes! and a chain. Yes. yes! Uh, I yes! tried to find them online. They are dumb expensive oh yes well that's one thing too i i think i don't think the crystal ball is that expensive but i'm trying to think of what i looked up and i was like god damn like yeah. i did buy i did buy because when i was younger i loved that these they, they had these little i dream a genie figurines and they were like little pop poly pockets but it was like the i dream a genie lamp poly and it came, pockets. Oh and, it came and it came with like a rom or what is that called like the floppy disk and i bought that off ebay that's in my that's in our room but i bought that off uh e- yeah, see, it is on eBay. It is it's I just, 60 bucks, the crystal ball. Here, I don't know if I, <laughs> more I, I, stuff. I, you know, I, <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> I could clean out some of that back there. Um, but no, I can you be know a whole what? series. You could hit the button. You could put the towel on again. You could hit the button, <laughs> and your listeners, your live listeners, could ask you questions. You could hit the scissors. People ball. do that. Yeah. People do that. They'll like roll a die and like tell an answer. <laughs> or I love the people that do lives on TikToks and they just write names. They're just like, oh, hi, Michael. And they'll just write their. You never see their face. Oh my God. It's just I their watch hands. The people who play the, uh, the tile game, where they play the tile game. Yes. With the nails. Oh. I'll watch that for hours. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yes. <laughs> yes. I want that tile game, but also I know I'll get it and probably just never not. play it. Never play it. Yeah, it'll just sit. It'll sit. You're like, who wants to play tiles? I'm like, we have things to do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to that that's what I want to start doing more on the TikTok side of things is um I like to watch videos and then I, we talk about them in the Discord or with people mm. and they're like why don't you make your reaction videos talking about the things you just watched and I, I was like I think I should that that should be my niche I think I'm pretty decent at it but uh yeah I don't it's it's wild but let's give some more love to okay. someone here on the channel um someone else who's a very big part of your content a very big part of who you are as a person and uh let's talk about that time traveling on the <laughs> the all-american all-american time traveling on this boy is he legit amish is that a, is that a bit or is that no idea oh i love I it don't know. We're yeah, that 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 we're, we're uh, me and the dej cult that is one of our top missions right now. Um, he doesn't know about it. It's top secret. It's behind the scenes. Um, but whenever we pick up on something, we always write it down. We have a whole folder at the office at headquarters. Um, and we are um, it's an open investigation. So, OK, uh, <laughs> I, I love how how like he gra like he grounds you like like he's your like he's your uh, the that like the rod like it like if in case i just hold on to my to my jb and i'm i'm gonna be good to go you know mm -hmm. what i mean i i think you're you two uh together are just like mm -hmm. if if, if I, I i'm not really into the energies or crystals or metaphysical mm -hmm. i want to believe it but i just i struggle uh but if if there's a way that enter you could physically see two energies that are supposed to be together, it's used to. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's funny because I he likes my crazy, I like his calm. But believe it or not, JB is so funny. He is very so so he's so, you know well, that's one thing about him too. He's quick. He is even quicker than me when it comes to coming up with jokes. Like he is on it it, it, it is a, it, 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 I, it, i'm jealous of him sometimes i sometimes my brain's like puh, 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 when i'm trying to like think of something him it's just like quick he's so funny as like serious as he is he's he, he's just awesome but yes he he is the calm to my storm and i'm the storm to his calm yeah i love when you're lucky him and you turn the camera to him when he's not ready or like he's and he immediately risen <laughs> he's like yeah hey Hey, hey there. <laughs> the JB Riz hey face. There. I, uh so what is Eyebrows. what is your yes, the uh, what is your favorite JB uh JB dish? Oh, oh my god. Fantastic well, cook. That's what we're that's why I'm coming over. I gotta oh eat. I gotta try god. some. What's for oh. dinner? I need to come over for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I you know, and I honestly wish that would have caught on a little. I would have I would love to see other people's rendition of that. I would love Nothing more than to see other people do a what's for dinner. I think it would be so funny. I I would love that. Um, to pick his favorite dish, Anthony, it is so hard. It it, it really and truly is. It it I mean, everything he makes is bomb, man. Like it's the it's desserts, really... the desserts get me. As a little chubby boy I am, oh, oh boy, those desserts get oh, me. Oh my god. There's no there's no shortage of desserts in our house, and there's no um shortage of food i mean it's so hard he's such a good cook whether it's mexican food whether it's um you know the bangers and mash whether it's i mean he that man loves to cook and you could tell he loves to cook and it's so hard i have to say that to you and everyone always asks that they're like what's your favorite dish that jb makes what's your favorite dish and to be honest with you it's I, it's it's so hard to narrow one down it really yeah. and truly is i mean 
I love it. <laughs> it's going to sound silly, but I love his pork steaks um, because he makes like a really good onion cheese sauce on top of it. His crepe lasagna is banging. His French onion soup's banging. I mean, it is. It, it, it's like asking me to pick like my favorite. I I, I can't. It's it's too yeah, hard. It's too it. hard. Uh, so very inspired. Uh, here's where I, I find a lot of similarities with you is I, I love hearing other people's takes on music and movies and pop culture. Okay. Very inspired by pop yes. culture as Me you too. are as well. What are we talked a little bit about Sabrina and Clarissa and all that. What are some things currently right now? Maybe you just recently watched or you're into that 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 is upset is in the world of Dante that you're obsessed about. Well, you know, I'm also, I love rewatching uh, something that I'm obsessed with now. Um, well, right now, and it's going to sound silly. I, we, JB and I have started watching the uh, TV show Pen15. I don't know if you know what that is. No, it's but I love Hulu. everything about it already. Um, we started watching that. <laughs> remember the Pen15 Club a couple times? I'm kind of obsessed <laughs> with that. It's like these two grown women, but they play... 13 year old versions of themselves and everybody else in the show is 13, but they're like okay. tall and but they're supposed to be, it, it is comedy gold. It is amazing. Um, and I rewatch a lot of stuff. Like right now I'm rewatching, um, like I rewatch a lot of stuff that of people that I look up to. So I'll get in the mode, the, the mode of rewatching like old uh, Lucy interviews, like Lucille Ball. Like I'll watch, Old She's interviews so of her. oh my god, like so Joan Joan Rivers stand up, Kathy Griffin stand up. I'm I, I'm recently watching rewatching my life on the D list because I she's someone I I love Kathy Griffin. I love you know so I'll rewatch those things a lot. Um, but obsessed right now, uh, probably that Pen Fifteen show. I I, I want to keep watching it. Like JB and I were only able to watch two episodes tonight. Not that I didn't want to come on here. But we watched two episodes tonight. I was like, damn, I want to watch more. It's so good. It's, it's, I love a good comedy show. I love Same. laughing. I love a good comedy show. I love the like Broad City duo or it's two, you oh, know, Broad City, so, Broad City was really good. Love Broad City. And this Pen 15 is kind of like that. So I like that, like that, that, uh, woman buddy, you know, yeah. comedy. Um, so I'm, so I'm obsessed with that right now. I'm watching that and I would have to say, I think about it a lot. So I would say I'm obsessed with that right now. I, I, or do you I latch mean in like, to... in like news and stuff? Oh, anything, or do you mean anything in general? Oh. We'll, we'll dive more into it. We got some time here, but like, I, for me personally, I like the, uh, um, I rewatch The Office more times than I'd like to imagine. Like, I'd like, so I'm rocking. I don't know if you're an Office fan. I but am, but also, I'm wearing, okay. I'm wearing, I'm wearing the kickball shirt. I'm wearing, yes. Ah, the... oh, see, okay. <laughs> I have to say this. I like the I like the office, but I'm a Parks and Rec girly. I love Parks I and Rec love too. Love Parks and Rec. That part I, I love Parks and Rec. Like I've uh, seen every episode of The Office. Yeah. So I I've, need you to understand me real quick. I want to make sure you fully get this. When I say I want all of your bacon and eggs. I don't mean I want a lot. I want you to go in the back and I want you to make me every, every single bacon and egg that you have. <laughs> Lo I love Ron Swanson. Love Ron Swanson. I love, oh my God. Love, oh, love John Raffio, Mona Lisa, um, Leslie. I mean, of course, Leslie. Who's, no. the, I mean who's the girl that was like really quirky and funny? She was. No, not Aubrey, the other girl, though. The one who was really, really crazy um, that used to hang out with Aziz. Yeah. With the curly hair, Mona Lisa. Mona, Mona, yeah, she yeah, was. Yeah, she played Mona Lisa, John yeah, Raffio's yeah. sister. Yeah, yes. Money, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she was good. That I so I get caught up, and also like I love Always Sunny because yes, Always Sunny is like the, that toxic growing up people who never yes. age, and it's funny to look back yes. and laugh at that. I love like, Always Sunny. Like a lot of people watch it, so here's what sucks: is when people kind of uh make that stuff funny of like your past and who we used to be as a society mm -hmm. some people think it's okay to relive that again mm -hmm. but even like the people who created parks uh, i mean always sunny are like there's some old episodes that we were like eh, too far you know what I yeah mean? yeah because they're mm -hmm. very like liberal and very like you know, they're progressive and they want everyone to have a fair shake but they do a lot like they they, they kind of latch onto that humor of like uh that old school toxic scumbag people of pennsylvania which i i eat that up so much oh me too has a good one bob's Me burgers too. 
all day long. Yes, Bob's Burgers. Yes, I love Bob's Burgers. Bob's, yes. Bob's Burgers. Mm-hmm. Um, so are you the same with movies as well? Is it like, do you like comedy movies? Is I love three, three Desert Island movies. Where are we at? Oh, um, okay. It's going to, uh, they're my top three. The Little Mermaid, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and Young Adult. I love Young Adult with Charlize Theron. I don't think I've ever uh, seen that. Oh, she plays this like, and she does such a good job at it. Like, oh, she plays this like popular girl who treats yourself. Uh, (laughs) She plays this like popular girl who's a writer. And then she goes back to her hometown. And try and goes after like her high school sweetheart, but he's had has a baby on the way with his now wife. And oh, Charlize Theron is amazing in it. Her performance is amazing in it. I can watch. That's one of those movies I can watch over and over and over and over again. Right, so probably that, those. That, that might be in the list for an upcoming episode. We're gonna have. We're yes. Gonna do it. Oh, yeah. I would love that. Please let me know. I would love that. We'll do Definitely. that. Definitely. I I've been actually like the podcast. I enjoy doing interviews, but I think I'm at a point where I think I'm gonna. T- don't tone back the interviews and mm. do more reviews and then make the interviews more special because I, I think I let too many people on and then sometimes I don't it's not like I like mm. to meet someone connect with them and be like oh this is going to be a good interview mm. I let that, and I like when I met you I was like oh this is going to be it's going to be a fun one like yes! how, yeah, oh my god I'm so happy to be here so happy yeah. to be here um Move, what we said, breakfast at Tiffany's, very, very good. That's a great one. I'm a, I'm a breakfast club guy. I love the breakfast I, club. Oh yeah, of course, yes. Mm-hmm. And 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 another like chick flick one that I, I, I don't tell a lot of people. I'm a huge fan of, but it's one of my favorite movies. I love Ten Things I Hate About You. Oh my god, of course, that's a well, classic. That's a great. That's movie. a classic. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, oh, that's the whole thing that my those my top three. Those are like movies like I watch. And of course, Rocky, because, you know, I'm a man. Rocky. (laughs) Love that. Love that for you. (laughs) No, I mean, you know, no. And to be honest with you, I think I've only seen the first Rocky. uh, But but, but my top three, it's just like like every year. I mean, I love The Little Mermaid because it's like the first movie I remember watching when I was little. Um, Breakfast at Tiffany's, I just love the story. And I love Audrey Hepburn. So, like, every year I watch... The Little Mermaid and Breakfast at Tiffany's on my birthday. So I watch both of those. And then Young Adult, I just, I think Charlize Theron is just a, she's just a knockout act- actress. She, yeah. she, I mean, her in Monster, her in, I mean, God, she did she, Monster too well. That was like, you go back and watch, I love documentaries too. I'm a mm, documentary mm, psycho. Me too. Mm-hmm. I, they're like, anything oh. on a cult. Give me, give me a documentary on a cult. Did you oh. watch it on Netflix? How to be, yes. how to be a great cult leader? I that's mm. what we call, yeah so good I didn't watch it I didn't watch it yet I didn't watch it yet but okay okay yeah. uh yeah. I, I I watched a documentary for like three days on hallucinogenic drugs and I've never taken one in my life but I was like I'm interested let me sit down and watch a documentary on this like I I watch about everything true crime this that I if it's a documentary I'm putting it on I love that. But, but love you have to be that. careful because some documentaries sneak in on you and they're just pushing an agenda and they make you think that everything yes. they're teaching you is good. So you got to if you if you're a, a, a avid documentary watcher, you still also have to go do your research to make sure you're not being fed a whole mm-hmm. bunch of bullshit. You know what I mean? 100 percent. And then that's that's how you get red hats and think there's cues everywhere. Like, you know, you got to be careful with documentaries. <laughs> yes. One hundred percent. I be, usually there's a I us- leader and a follower. You have to be careful with the documentary. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I usually do documentaries like word of mouth because like a lot of my friends like documentaries. So if they say to me, hey, Dante, you got to watch this. I'll be like, OK, you know, me searching one out. I It's hard for me to search one out only because of that exact reason. I yes. get like. I get like, uh, you know, like I, I'm too nervous to start this. So if you if you were to like message me and be like, Dante, you got to check this one out. It's so so good. I watch. The program it. was good. The program yes. is a, a, yes. a school in New York. Oh yes, I think that I knew was someone who was in that thing. Oh my god! Well, yeah. there was a bunch of them too. There was, there was a, whole there was a bunch, bunch of kids of from Pennsylvania. Remember when that judge yeah. in Pennsylvania was shipping kids mm-hmm. all over the place? Mm-hmm. I think they were involved in something like that too. Yes, one hundred percent. I remember that. Oh my mm-hmm. god. Could that was me. a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> thing, I never got caught. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> me either. <laughs> so, so I did meet you at a, a drag performance. Is that something you've ever done or participated in or, or, or ever thought you would go into that realm? Um, Have I thought about it? Yes. But is it some, maybe one day, never say never, but it's kind of like, um, you know, if I'm being completely honest with you, 
Uh, if the opportunity arose, I maybe would. Because you can dance. You can move. I like, thank you, you. You can dance, but also you have the charisma. I think you would be fantastic at Ca- uh, Classically trained. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> by Lucille um, Ball. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I already know the song I would do. I don't know. It's by Chrissy something. And it's, I, I forget the title of it, but it comes on my playlist now. It's like, if I ever did drag, this would be my song. Um, no, but I do appreciate the community. And I think, uh, you know, I love going to shows and, and all of that. And of course, they're, they're uh, in the umbrella of our community, you know, drag queens, drag performers. And of course, they're in our community. So, of course, I support them and, and all of that. But also... Um, you know, I, I, I would be ner- I would be nervous. Of course, I would be nervous. But if the opportunity ever arose, maybe, maybe it'd be fun. It'd be fun. Yeah, I learned, yeah. It's it. It is so much like pro wrestling. It's disgusting. Oh uh, my god! I'm sure you can see yeah. the similarities. You yeah, can see like, oh, them. You you, you kind of create a character and a persona, mm. and then that character mm. would respond to things differently mm. than others. I'm like, this is everything mm. I love in the world. Mm. I, I I that's probably one thing I've been obsessed with my entire life more than anything is definitely pro wrestling. Like I am. I am a pro. I tried so hard to get away from it at one point. I was like, mm. I, 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 I want to be a part of it. I just love it. I, mm. I love going to the shows and stuff. Yes. And that's nothing. The hair flips. I, oh, I, got, yes. I got great hair, but I can't, I can't <laughs> flip it. <I> can't. <laughs> that was a lot of watching Britney Spears. I think my uh, girl, Britney Spears. Oh, your Britney, your Britney videos were really good too. My, the, the, my, the I love, <laughs> I love Britney Spears. My favorite thing that I've, I, the only reason, Anthony, that I wanted long hair is so I could flip it like Britney Spears. That's the only reason I want long hair is so I can flip it. That's, that's really it, to be honest. I wanted long hair and chest hair because of pro wrestlers. I was like, I hope, like, you know, like growing up to like, Drink this, kid. It'll put hair in your chest. I'm like, I'm scarfing it down. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get a hairy chest. I love our two worlds <laughs> colliding, Anthony. I love this. Two ends of the spectrum, and we're just. Smash I love it. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely I wanted beautiful. long hair because of Britney Spears. I wanted long hair because of pro wrestling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did get the chest hair though. I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, <laughs> it worked. Whatever I drank, it was good to go. That Jack Daniels did it for me. Um, well, we are at that point too, in where we're getting close to the end. I try to keep them there. I, I don't want to keep you all night. We got we to get okay. you back to 10 15. But okay, uh, let's here. open the chat up. Let's okay. uh, anyone have any questions, please get them in the chat. And before before I get into any of that, also, super chats have been absolutely bon- bon- bonkers. So thank you, uh, Anastasia, for the the uh, ninety nine, the three dollars, the four. I, I'm not used to this. This is something that just happened for me. I just got yeah, partnered yeah. on oh, YouTube. Yes. Congratulations yeah. on a thousand subscribers. Well, well the I... reason I'm even probably able to do so, I was like fifty away from a thousand. Mm. And when you made your post saying you were going to be here, your community. Mm flooded over and supported the channel mm. and it really put me over the top to get to this so i really appreciate no you problem your community for doing i that. i have the most amazing community in the whole entire world i honestly and truly do i love my followers and my, com- and my community uh more than anything they get me they're hilarious they are supportive they're positive and i am so so grateful and lucky for them every single day I, I really and truly am. I love I love them so I'm, so I'm much. The same, I'm the same way with my community. Mm. When I when I went through my divorce and I had to move and I was trying to figure things out and no car, no job, had to start mm-hmm. at zero again. Uh, I had two of my members of the community, Anastasia and Raz, who are from Australia, who were like, mm. "Hey, uh, you always wanted to be in London, right?" I said, I, 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 "Everything about my soul wants to be in London." And they're like, "And I always wanted to go to Wembley Stadium. I'm a Queen mm. fan. I love Elton John. I love mm. that whole British rock scene." Yes, I, I got to go see pro wrestling in Wembley Stadium, and I got to be in <laughs> London for a week, and that was only that was all because of my community. Like, so like mm-hmm. people people are amazing, and they and they mm. pick you up when you need them the most, but. Yes. First one here is my only question is Dante, how did you get so fabulous? Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It just like happened. It's just like, I don't know. Ask Jesus or God or something. I, I don't, I don't know. I've been called podcast Jesus with this. With this. <laughs> no, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I was raised by um, amazing women. I have to say that I was amazed by amazing women who were all fabulous and I wanted to be just like them. And I look up and I look up to amazing women who are fabulous. I look up to anyone who is fabulous. And I, I'm a big person, Anthony, where I watch people. I watch people I admire Mm -hmm. and then I go off what they do. You know what I mean? So throughout my life, you know, just if I saw someone wearing something and I was like, Oh, I want to get something like that. 
Um, probably that's what I would equate it to. I remember going shopping with my aunt all the time when I was younger. You know, that's where I got my love of shopping. I always went shopping with her. And um, yeah, I was raised by uh, fabulous women. And that's what I attribute being fabulous to. Is do them. you do you look at people like like a Lucio Ball and and people who like s- were such trendsetters are so ahead of their curve and you look at them and be like yo I know that their path sucked and they probably at one point didn't realize they got their roses when they deserved it but like somebody like Lucy changed yeah culture, mm-hmm. like changed the world and, it, mm-hmm. and and went against the grain like I love stuff like that I love mm-hmm. studying those things like Lucy's the first she doesn't get credit mm-hmm. for it but she's the first interracial kiss on TV mm-hmm. but because mm-hmm. Rick, Ricky was Spanish it wasn't counted and um, she was the first pregnant woman on TV first pregnant woman on TV mm-hmm. first woman to own her own production mm-hmm. studio first woman mm-hmm. to push the beds together on mm-hmm. TV like mm-hmm. she very pro LGBTQ mm-hmm. at the time like she was ahead mm-hmm. of the curve on that fantastic i love that yes. I, i'm the same way i study people and i'm like yes i i look at a situation and i go where people say well that's you're never going to change that we're too embedded and i look at mm. it and go not a chance i'm going to change that shit well, <laughs> well i like hearing people's stories of how they got here or how they got there i i, I i'm a firm believer in that I, I think you should pick somebody and if someone I, I always believed in pick someone whose life you want and you might not get that exact life but then emulate it and and go try to go on the same path they did. Or even with comedy, like I I love physical comedy. So I look to like people like Amanda Bynes, Lucille Ball. How do, how do they move their, or Jim, I mean, Jim Carrey is, I mean, I love him, but like how they move their faces, how do they, you know, do this fall or move around or use their whole body? You know, like I, I love studying that part too of, of, of where they got to where they are and those little things they do, like the little faces they make or the little, like how did they move their face like that? Or how do they fling themselves over here? Or how do they like scream, you know? And I, I just love that. I love studying that. That's like my, yeah. that's why I rewatch so many of them because I, I love seeing the people that I look up to and watching them over and over and over again. I'm not as good as you are with the live chats. I lost like three of them. Uh, do you like the last unicorn? I was somewhere here and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> the chat is fantastic. I love it, but I'm still learning. <laughs> I have never seen the last unicorn. I haven't either. I've, I've never. I haven't even heard of that one, to be honest with you. I, no. thought, I, I thought I was missing the boat on something, but now I have to look it up. I know uh, what it is, but I've never seen it. Uh, would you? Here you go. Would you ever consider uh, going to an indie wrestling event that ABJ is doing commentary at? Would you be a commentary partner with me? Would you call wrestling matches? Uh, yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say no. I do I a guest with you. Yeah. Wrestler. So here's the thing. I think if we were to do it, the other wrestlers would hate it because they're very critical on commentary and you have to take their character serious. I don't do that at all. <laughs> um, I, I, guess, yeah, I already Anthony, I, yeah. I wouldn't be able to. How's that? Yeah. I, I would not be able to take <laughs> them seriously. No offense to them. I just wouldn't be able to. I love them. Love them. But I, I don't take anything too seriously. So uh, I, I wouldn't be able to. I, I'm also, that's another thing, Anthony. I'm a firm believer is that you got to make fun of yourself, man. You got yes. you you got you got to be in on the joke. Like you, you got to be able to make fun of yourself. You got to allow people to like, you know, dig at you and, you know, all those things you have to, because nobody's, per- and you're not perfect and nobody's perfect. And, you- and life's too, again, short to take things too seriously. You know what I mean? Uh, this one here question is when, when do we get the, the Kool-Aid? What flavor would your Kool-Aid be as two, as two cult leaders here? What flavor are we going for? <laughs> what? <Whatever. laughs> <laughs> um, you know, let's go with uh, blue. Blue, <laughs> <laughs> cherry, cherry's a go-to, right? But I feel like I, I like my grape too. But nobody else likes grape like I do, so I probably go <laughs> cherry because it's the easy one. Not fruit I, punch though. Fuck fruit uh, punch. No, I'm not, a fruit not punch. no, not fruit yeah. punch. Probably the blue one. I forget what the blue one is though. But probably the blue one. It's just I blue. Like I don't the think there's one. a flavor. I just think oh it's okay, blue. just yeah. Blue. I think it, I think blue. it's just blue. Yeah. Um, so you'd go with the red dye forty. You you don't yeah, yeah. you only okay. Good yeah. for you. That's amazing. Uh, Pulling out where, all the stops. Where else would you like to appear or maybe travel to? Oh my gosh. Um, to be honest with you, Anthony, I haven't. Uh, you know, I've only really been a couple places. You know, I haven't really traveled that much. So I'm I'm always just happy. I 
you know, if I'm going to put a pin in it, I've always wanted to go to London and Italy. I've always wanted to go to those two places. Do London. Do uh, London. It's I want to so... go there. And the, well, we actually, speaking of, we we have our passport papers on the kitchen table right there. So I'm work. I'm working on it. I'm working yeah. on it. But... London. London's beautiful. It's oh, so, I'm sure. It's um, as someone who who is now opening up to pride and LGBT mm. and that and that culture, going to like in America, it's like. So I, I went to my first Pride event shortly after meeting you, or before meeting you, and maybe it was. And I remember going, and it was a group of us. And uh, I, I wore my wrestling is gay shirt, which is a wrestler named Effie, who is an openly gay wrestler. And he ha he has a merchandise company called wrestling is gay. And all of the proceeds. I love that. that. Tells, yeah. He, and all the proceeds for the shirts go to help. Like, it's almost like the Trevor project with displaced kids when they, if they come <laughs> to the family and they get kicked out, he gives the yes. proceeds to that. I don't mean to laugh at that part. I'm yeah, still yeah. laughing at the wrestling is gay. The wrestling is I mean, gay. Like... It is it's totally gay. <laughs> It's so gay. It's so gay. It's the gayest thing ever. <laughs> um, but uh, the uh, so I wore the shirt and I wore a uh, actually I was gonna wear the he this is the headband I was gonna make. It was a sleeve of it. It's it was like colored like this. Oh, like love it. Blue and pink. Yes. Um, I don't know the colors of everything. I'm still learning. So I was wearing a bisexual shirt. All I know is if I ever change teams, Dante, I can pull some hot dudes, right? Like, <laughs> like, like dudes, <laughs> like dudes who I'm like, Yo, you're a good looking guy. And like, you're attractive. I'm like, my confidence was through the roof. Oh, I yeah. <laughs> I found mm. out what a bear was. I'm yep. that. <laughs> but uh, it was a great time. I love Congratulations. But, but when we went there, I was like nervous because there are shitty people in the world and we live mm. in a society in America mm. where it's like mm. you go to a large crowded place and it's a place where people are trying to be themselves and just exist. And you're mm. like, I, I was nervous of like mm. shootings or people trying mm. to hurt other mm. people. And that that's really scary to me. But like in London, like there's so much culture that's so pro like like drag or these shows or all these things going around. And it's just like in London, like because of people like Freddie and Elton and that culture mm -hmm. was just like, it's not like it's anything different. It's just like, you mm -hmm. would just go in and just be a part of it. And, mm -hmm. like, and like, I really love that about London. It's just like a melting pot of everything is just accepted for who mm -hmm. you are and what you are. And mm -hmm. I, that's what I really, really liked about London. I, I, I would, I would go back in a heartbeat if I could. Oh, I, well, I can't wait now. Now you have me all excited. I'm like, hell yeah. yeah. Uh, do you see yourself as a role model? Lily's helping me write stuff because I'm missing. I thank oh. you, Lily. Oh. Who do you see as your role model, and how uh, how do you think? How do you believe it made you uh, the person you are today? Um, that is such a good question. Um, I don't have. I, I wouldn't say I have like uh, one specific role model. Um, I would have to say. I guess, to be honest with you, the people that I mentioned, probably the people that I look up to the most, um, pro I, my role model is probably, uh, and it's weird to say strong women. I, I love strong women. I love, again, Lucille Ball, Kathy, you know, those are the people I grew up with and watched and Amanda Bynes and all of that. So I don't have one specific role model, but I would say I have a whole bunch of that I got, you know, that that again i pulled things from and kind of all of that but one specific one i can't really say one yeah. you know but I, a, even even some family members like you know my my aunt my mom my my grandmother i really looked up to my grandmother was a, a short little loud mouthed italian lady you know and i loved her every every little bit of her you know and she's yeah. someone i looked up to because she she just truly didn't give a fuck she really yeah. did if someone if someone cut her off in the parking lot she might have been 75 years old and this tall but she got out of her car and was saying like what the f and this and that and i was like nanny you can't do like what, what am i gonna do <laughs> and you're yelling at this person across the parking lot like what am i gonna do but then i i look at her and i'm like she just didn't care like she didn't care yeah. so i look up to her i mean and again, probably a, a lot of um, because again, I was raised by women, so a lot of strong, just you know, um, women is probably my role models, family members, celebrities, comedians, stuff like that. How do you handle disrespect or hate? Uh, my the saying I always go to happy bitches ain't hating, and hating bitches ain't happy. I always look at, and I know it's like super cliche, but if someone is going out of their way, especially on the world of social media, to make a fake account, to not put their face, not put their identity, just to make an account to go troll and hurt people's feelings and downplay people, I actually feel 
more sorry for them that they hate their existence so much they have to hide behind a personality to hate mm -hmm. others and i don't get offended by it because like I, I i always try to i want to be on the same level as everybody but those people are not on the same level as me mm -hmm. and if they're if they're going out of their way to make a fake account to go harm other people like i hope you find happiness i really hope you I, find I, something I, to I always say the same thing. And actually, real quick, someone in the chat reminded me, I look up to uh, one of the people I really do look up to, and actually they reminded me, is, sorry, I, I couldn't think of, but yeah, yeah. Do Dolly Parton. I Dolly. love Dolly Parton. I love what a good, how charitable she is. I love what a good person she is. I love how she accepts everybody. I look up, I want to be like Dolly Parton. I want to help people. I want to, again, leave this earth making sure I did all the good I possibly could. And she's someone I look up to. But getting back to the hate and disrespect is, like I said to you before, Anthony, the only person's opinion of me that matters to me is my own. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. I, I don't care what people say about my voice, my teeth, my hair, um, anything. I, I don't really care care it, it's it they're so not important to me mm. i lay my head down on my pillow great every night i have a why would i care what like a a freak thinks about me some unhappy person that's that gets off on like trolling people online that's how you get off you want to yeah. know how i get off i have a beautiful house what? Ew! Stop <laughs> learning with me, Anthony! <laughs> Lily is right behind you! Um, um, but you know, you know, I know how I get off. I get off by making people happy. I get off by spending time with my husband in my beautiful house, in my home, in, around people that love me and my group of friends that love me and support me and my family that loves me and supports me. That's how I get off. So... Yeah. You get off on that. That is so, I'm so, I feel so bad for you. Like, yeah. I feel so bad for you that it see in my spare time, I'm hanging out with my husband and my friends and my family and doing things I love and making people smile and laugh. In your free time, you're getting on your phone and going and being a troll to people. How yeah. sad is that? It sucks for them. It really oh does. Oh my God. What so they're not They're not enjoying the world. Which well, is, Anthony, which is let me ask you this. Do you yeah. ever, do you ever comment on people's things or go in lives and say mean things or bring, you know? Yes, I do. But only. I well, this was a nice <laughs> podcast. Thank hold you on, for having hold on. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I go past some of those red hat streams. And oh, wow, wow. Well, well. And, well, I, and I okay. troll a little bit. Okay, I troll a little okay. bit. Well, yeah, I yeah. think, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying some people don't deserve it. Um, I don't but... troll, but I, I, I just, I, I just do the, I, I, I put a mirror up. You know what I mean? Hmm. So my comment is more like, oh, imagine, imagine you, you hate someone for something you don't understand. I, it's, so I, 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 but they don't really get a lot of my jokes when I say it via mm. keyboard because they're, they're, they already they have already fell down a rabbit hole because of their mind state they're in so they, they're not going to understand my my dig at them mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know what i mean but uh i think that's the best the best place to put a pin in it here we got to do this again yes um, definitely we'll we will definitely touch base again and and maybe do some movie reviews and stuff like I that i would love it you just let me know and i'm there you just let me know i'd love to I, I know this is, has been said a million times in the chat and a million times in your TikTok lives and all your social medias, but I want to truly say that you have inspired me to look at things differently and approach things differently and be confident in who you are as a person and, and your energy. Um, a, a good, a good podcast for me is like a really good date. Right. And, and <laughs> sorry, Lily, but, Lily! but it, it is, it's a really good date and it's, 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 it's soul searching. Like it, it feels like you got up, you got that, how you said you're very empathic. So you, you like how you feel like uh, a lot of people draw energy from you and mm -hmm. it drains you. I'm kind I feel the same way a lot too. So it's really nice when you're able to get a vibe or energy from someone else and it fills mm. your cup because it's mm. hard to find those people mm. that can give you that energy you need. And and this podcast was everything I needed for that. Well, well real quick before we end it, I just want to say one thing that I've learned by being yourself and being your truly authentic self and doing what you want to do and this goes out to all my people out here too. Uh, and doing what you want to do is when you find something that you do that you love and you're filling your own cup, yeah. you, you attract those. You don't get me wrong. You attract those bad people too, but you attract so many good people, you know, yeah. and you start being, and you start being able to weed out 
those people that don't really have good intentions or or loyalty or stuff like that and and you hold those ones that do closer so i think i think what you're doing is wonderful i i think you branching out is a wonderful i i am i love it love it love it love it and i yeah. i i wish you nothing but the best and i'll be watching i'll be seeing you and stuff and i always join that, the lives but... i always pop in and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean this is great and i would love to do it again and you got this dude you're you're i was saying to jb you're so personable you're so kind you you listen to people um, you're very, you're a very good conversationalist, and I think you're gonna go far, my friend. I really and truly do. I really and truly do. Well, let's go change the world together, all right? Yeah! Let's, let's get it done, uh, and let's and let's use our, our our amazing cult leader abilities and bring our people <laughs> with us, and let's change the world for positive. Hell I yeah, love man. I love all of you for being a part of this. I really want to say that this is the most watched live stream i have ever done in six years the engagement the content everything has been beautiful mm -hmm. i appreciate you all so so much and if listen if you guys become pro wrestling fans again because of this i love you too <laughs> you know? but uh <laughs> but no seriously uh where can people find you where can people support um oh oh, oh sorry um no, one of your moderators uh has an awesome name today and i said i'm gonna wear this at one point in the podcast, this is my Rusty Wallace jacket that I was telling you about. <laughs> Someone just said, "Let's make the let's make the world a little bit more queer." I'm down. I'm cool uh, wait, with that. Let me. Let me yeah. Oh this my! Oh oh, Rusty! Yes, yeah, this, is the, this yes. is the Rusty jacket. So Rusty, yes. your moderator, uh, great name. So I, I love my Rusty. rusty. There's my Rusty jacket right there. I, and that's one thing I want to say in this chat too before we go. I love my moderators. Thank you for keeping my lives uh, positive, safe. A safe space for everybody because I see Joni here. I see a couple of you here, Candy Kisses, um, for keeping my chat safe and keeping it a positive uh, space for everybody. And and that's one thing too is 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 I also try to weed those people out in my lives or anything like that. Like if you're coming in here to be a, a piece of shit. Can move it along. You know what thanks, I mean. Thanks like, for the engagement. Along. I appreciate. It. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, where can people find the support? Oh. You? Sorry, um, mostly TikTok. Um, I'm gonna be getting back on YouTube hopefully by this summer. Um, Instagram, the most the places I'm most active on are mo number one TikTok, second would be Instagram. Uh, I do have a Twitter. Uh, all of them are Dante James with two E's in the James, so J A M E E S. Um, but the most active ones are TikTok, uh, Instagram. Probably Twitter. I'm on Facebook, but like Facebook scares me. So like I don't really use it that much anymore. Um, and that's it. I love it. Uh, before we get out here, just want to plug some stuff. We go. I'm always live throughout the week uh, doing hangouts where we watch wrestling, but those conversations go all over the place. Just did an episode two days ago with my buddy Charles, who owns his own horror company, where he makes T-shirts and art prints for a lot of cool people. And we reviewed the movie Dead Ri The Evil Dead Rise, which – I loved spoiler alert. Go watch it. But I uh, oh, just kind of find myself. I love the Evil Dead franchise. Oh, me too. I, mm. I'm also a huge Chucky fan. And me I too. Found, I found out recently that the guy who created and wrote and does Chucky is a part of the community. And I didn't know that. Yes, and, Don Mancini. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, mm. I didn't. And so I watched the first episode of the TV show. And when when the kid's like, uh, you know I'm gay, and he's like, "Yeah, man, I, I have a kid that's that's uh, that's non-binary," and he's mm. like, "Oh," and he goes, "What do you think I am? Some kind of monster?" Yes, like, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, like, I mean, also look at Tiffany. I mean, Tiffany's a gay icon. I mean, yes, so if oh, that doesn't very I, much so. Listen, I love I love Chucky, but I'm a, I will actually want to get on my arm somewhere like a heart with Tiff Tiff in it because yeah. I love Tiffany. I yeah. love Tiffany, but yes, uh, me too. Uh, am I allowed to show the logos? Are you cool with that? You can show whatever you want. All right. So Dante has a lot of merchandise that flows through in different variations. <laughs> and and uh, I always get Barbie vibes from Dante. And then I found out that Dante really loves Hello Kitty as well. Yes. Maybe Breakfast at Tiffany's, a few other ones maybe we'll throw at you as well. Love but we that. did make a special logo for Dante that they, they will be using for their upcoming merch line. So this is the yeah. first one. Look at that! Love it. And this was made by Lily over here. We'll give her some love. Thank There's you, Lily. Lily. She's wearing her uh, her nun black crafts hoodie. I love. Uh, what is this? What does the back say? Um, Hold on, I'll turn the mic on. 
Go ahead. So it says, I'm sorry I missed church today. I was busy practicing witchcraft and becoming a lesbian. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a better time to me. So yeah. And then and then the Hello Kitty Dante logo. Hello Kitty. So Love there it. they are. So that's what we're right. trying to do is when 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 guests come on, we try to if they do movie reviews and stuff like that, we send them something that they can use for themselves. And I will say it is the most uh I, I had a hard time picking. A, a a thumbnail for this one. We made I four, know. we made four of them. Look at them all. Like Gorgina, I, Gorgina, Gorgina, Gorgina. So it was this, th this one was my favorite though. I, I <laughs> That's the jacket I'm wearing. Yes. I actually wore this. Another reason why I wore this, Anthony, is because I've worn this. I have so many good memories in this jacket, and I wanted to make this one of them. So yeah. that's why I wore it. So the well, yes, I it was so hard. I appreciate it. And thank you all once again so much for coming through. Uh, check out cool content. Uh, yes. Hit that subscribe if you haven't done so already. And also, and once this airs and it's out, uh, this will also be available on all podcast platforms. So if you're on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever it may be, head over and, and subscribe and show love to the ABJ podcast on those as well. Uh, it's it's funny. I, I am considered a wrestling podcast of what I do. Mm -hmm. And then I had my buddy on who lived in Taiwan for a while. And and we talked nothing about wrestling, but when I had him on and did the interview, he had a bunch of people from Taiwan who listened, and it made me the number one wrestling podcast in Taiwan. Oh. <laughs> 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 so whatever works, right? First of all, how random. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I got an alert being like, "You're congratulations, you're number one in the country of Taiwan for pro wrestling," and I was like. I'm taking it. No, you can never take that away from me. I've Listen, been number one Anthony, in the country. Yeah, yeah, take what you can get, my friend. I I got a, a PR box from Poppy, and I can swear it was just like a leftover holiday one that I yeah. got a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, you know what? Even if it was just like the last one laying around, I'm gonna take what I could get. <laughs> <laughs> I take what I can get. <laughs> I love it. Well, listen, we'll get out of here and we'll see you soon. Everyone soon. You'll see Dante on all social media. The links are below to follow them on all their adventures, buy merchandise, support all that fun stuff. Yes. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll, we'll both wake up tomorrow again. <laughs> uh <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait to wake up again. Oh! <laughs> And we'll see you guys on the next one. Here's some music by the Converse Kid. We're Love out of here. you guys. Thanks for watching this presentation. Like, share, and subscribe for more. <laughs>